In this lesson, we'll take a look at the database schema behind the StreamCat application. After this lesson, you'll understand the individual model objects and their properties and how they relate to one another. The user model is very basic. Besides the ID, created at, and updated at properties that are common to almost all entities in the application, it contains only a username and password. Your UGC application may contain much more information about a user, but since we're focusing on the live streaming aspect of the application, our user model is intentionally lightweight. When a user is created, three AWS resources are created via the AWS SDK for JavaScript version three, and information about those resources is stored in the StreamCat database so that it can easily be retrieved without requiring SDK calls later on. Why is this info stored in the database? Technically, the information about these resources could be retrieved by StreamCat via the AWS SDK for JavaScript, but that could quickly lead to our application hitting the Amazon IVS service quotas for SDK calls. Since these values do not change, it makes sense to store them in our application's database to avoid unnecessary SDK calls. The channel, chat room, and stage entity each have a one-to-one -one relationship with a user. The channel model is persisted in the channels table and stores the ARN, playback URL, ingest endpoint, and stream key that are returned by the SDK. These values are used by the application for broadcasting and playback. The channel model includes additional properties. Title is the default title for all streams on this channel. This title is applied to the current live stream. Is live indicates when a streamer is broadcasting to the channel. This value is updated automatically via our AWS Lambda function that is triggered by the event bridge rule that we looked at in lesson 1.4. Is partner indicates that a channel has reached partner status. We'll look at what this means in a subsequent lesson. The category ID is the category that the user has associated this channel with. The chat room model is persisted in the chat rooms table and stores the name, ARN, and endpoint. The stage model is persisted in the stages table and stores the name and ARN. An additional Boolean is live property indicates when a real-time stream is being broadcast by the user. A channel has a one-to-one -one relationship with a user and belongs to an optional category, which lets viewers know the topic of the channel. Each time a user live streams on a channel, a stream is automatically created, which tracks information specific to that stream. The current title and category ID are copied into the stream and can be edited after the stream is offline to help viewers discover bots. The stream start and end timestamps and recording start and end timestamps are captured when the appropriate values are received via EventBridge events. When a recording is complete, the duration and the path to the recorded assets are persisted. A stream has many metric objects related to it. While viewers view a live stream, they periodically publish metric entities. These metrics are used to determine the current stream viewers and provide analytics to the streamer. A chat room has a one-to-one -one relationship with a user and has many chat message entities. Each chat message belongs to a stream which has many metric. A stage has a one-to-one -one relationship with a user and has many stage token entities. The stage token belongs to a user and this property indicates the user who is invited to the current stage session, which is not always the user who owns the stage. The token property represents the token that is generated via the AWS SDK for JavaScript. This token has an expiration timestamp, which is represented by the expires at timestamp. In this lesson, we learned about the schema and persistence model for the StreamCat application. This concludes lesson one. In lesson two, we'll see how to create the cloud architecture that we learned about in lesson 1.4.